I'd like to call this meeting to order. We have the prayer and the pledge by Councilwoman Deidre Ledbetter. Dear God, we confess our need for you today. We need your healing and your grace. We need hope restored. We need to be reminded that you work on behalf of those you love constantly, powerfully, completely. Forgive us for trying to fix our situations all on our own. Forgive us for running all different directions and spinning our wheels to find help when true help and healing must be found first in you. Forgive us for forgetting how much we need you above everyone and everything. We come to you and bring you the places we are hurting. You see where no one else is able to fully see or understand. You know the pain we've carried, the burdens, the cares, you know where we need to be set free. We ask for your healing and grace to cover every broken place, every wound, every heartache. Thank you that you are able to do far more than we could ever imagine. Thank you for your mighty power that acts on behalf of your children. We reach out to you and know that you are restoring and redeeming every place of difficulty, every battle for your greater glory. Thank you that you will never waste our pain and suffering. We love you. We need you today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mayor Pro Tem Dan Doyle. Here. Council Member Natalie Lopez. Present. Council Member Marlon Lewis. Here. Council Member David Broussard. Here. Council Member Deidre Ledbetter. Here. Council Member Sherry Guidry. Uh, Sherry's caught in traffic. Council Member Dustin Swear. Here. Thank you. Our first item is public comment. I'll ask you at this time to silence your phones and you can only make a comment on an item that's on the agenda and there's no back and forth. You just make your comment and, and that's it. And I think we have one comment card tonight. Dee Dee Johnson Reed from District 5, address 813 Broussard Street in New Iberia, phone number 404. Uh, don't, don't, don't do that. All, all, okay. you, all you have to do is, is the name and the... Uh, Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at your phone now. That's all right. <laughs> Might not like your comment, you know? Uh, I have a question about yeah. the Housing Authority Board. Okay. Um, well, my question is really for you, Mr. Mayor. I read the article in the paper about the Housing Authority on Sunday, and I was confused by something that is stated. The article noted that the city has no control over the Housing Authority and acts only as an intermediary between the tension that's growing between the Housing Authority and HUD. Is that correct? I mean, I think that's what the article stated. Um, so my question for you is who appoints the Housing Authority Board? Um, because it, it seems to me that if there are so many maintenance issues that are happening in that area or there is some perception of mismanagement of finances, that whoever has the appointing authority should be able to at least select another board or perform some sort of audit to make sure we get these issues resolved. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Item two. Acceptance of the minutes of July 21st, 2020, as published on July 31st, 2020. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Second. Councilman Lewis. Second by Councilwoman Lidbetter. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing and seeing none, please vote your machines.
please vote your machines again. Okay. We'll try one more time, and if not, we'll go back to roll call vote. There we go. Thank you all very much. Madam Clerk, item three. Presentation for Vic Dalcom's family by Tony Miguez. And we have the marshal and the judge. Yeah. Big family. Miss uh, Miss Pearly wasn't able to make it tonight, right? but uh, on behalf of all of us, I have this plaque. But before I read it, there's a couple of things I'd like to say. First, that there's not a day that goes by that someone doesn't stop and tell me what your daddy did to them, helped them in some kind of way, uh, whether it be work or, or outside of work. He was truly loved. Uh, if my two sons could grow up to be half the man he, he, he was, I would be very proud of both of them. Yeah, he did a phenomenal job with the city. Let me go ahead and read the plaque. In memory of Dick Delcom, who served as New Iberia City Marshal from 1999 to 2019, a dedicated public servant, loving family man, loyal friend, accomplished golfer and horseman, from the Iberia City Marshal's Office, deputies and co-workers at the Iberia City Hall. The making of friends who are real friends is the best token we have of a man's success in life by Edward Everett Hale. I want your family to have this and be there with a special man. And if I may, Mr. Mayor, I want to say Certainly. just a few words. Um, so when I was elected my first term, I considered myself a young judge, meaning that's not necessarily accurate but I got to serve for four and a half or five years with your dad Vic um, I appreciate wisdom I try to gravitate to people that have wisdom your dad had wisdom and I appreciated that he's deeply missed I still can hear in the hall sometimes that foot that would drag with that cowboy boot <laughs> and uh, and we miss him we really do and so I was blessed to serve with him for like I said four and a half or five years and I want to be here tonight and tell you that personally and um, he's sorely missed absolutely Thank you. And if your family ever needs anything from the marshal's office, please feel free to. Thank you. He call. loved you. Thank you so much. We love him. And we got a bunch of his early employees in here as well. So hmm. thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vic. Uh, Vic was a special man and served here for a very long time. We uh, we all miss him. Uh, comment. You know I have to speak. That's right. <laughs> about Vic. Um, I love his family. <laughs> I'm going to try not to get upset. It's hard for me. Um, excuse me. I said I'll never cry in politics, but I only have six months left, so I guess I have nothing to lose. <laughs> um, it only, because I thought about this all day today. You know, sometimes it only takes one person to believe in someone and give them the courage to do something outside of their normal element. And it was one day in court, in court that Mr. Vic and Judge Segura gave me that courage. And if it wouldn't be for a conversation that I had with them, I wouldn't be right here today. And I just have to say to his family, just how wonderful he really was. And how I will never forget how a few words of encouragement and belief in me when I was 25 years old, like completely changed my life. You know, um, I'm getting out of politics this year and I'm, I'm never gonna get back in it. And they say never say never, but I mean it. <laughs> I mean it. 
Um, <laughs> it, it's on video now, right? Um, but that man was so kind, and and he believed in me, and it changed my life. And the the world needs people like that that are kind enough that when they believe in someone else, that they're willing to give those words of encouragement. Because sometimes it's all you need. Thank you. Thank you, Nam. Anybody else? Yes, sir, Mr. Roussard. Not just Mr. Vick, his wife was by his side all the time. <laughs> I mean, politically, it's hard to have somebody stand by you. And it kept him, his, that was his crutch, his wife. So I want to give her a lot of commitment on this. And we will miss Vic a lot because I'll, I'll watch through the years, I watch every politician would try to go to the city marshal's office just to visit. When I go to the city hall, I'd always stop up there and see if he was in. He'd always give you some good supportive words. So I will all miss him. Thank you. Yes, sir. I wasn't going to speak uh, because, you know, I, I know we talked about Vic in the past and Mr. Vic Delcom, city marshal, in the past. But I always, what always comes to my mind is my grandfather. My grandfather, for the family that doesn't know, my grandfather's name was Emery Wing Lewis. And they call him Wing because he had one arm. And he was a giant of a man to me. And when I met Mr. Vic and I realized they had another giant of a man with one arm, it was just impressive to me. And I always went out my way to speak to him and remind him of who I was and who I was akin to. So, you know, again, uh, I didn't get a chance to serve because we don't serve in that capacity, but it was a pleasure knowing him and knowing his work. So, blessings to the family. Thank you. All right. Thank you, and thank you all for coming. Thank you. All right, we move on to item 3B. Director or representatives from New Iberia Housing Authority to address the council on issue on the status of HUD compliance issues. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Evening. Thank you all for coming. Sure. Um, we received. Uh, couple of letters from HUD and I'll kind of bring everybody up to speed really okay. really really quickly um, we actually met today uh, this afternoon uh, my council members that have uh, housing development in their district <coughs> were on a conference call with myself with HUD on Friday so that they could kind of hear some of the concerns and things that we could talk about uh, of issues this has been ongoing for about two years uh, Tish has been there about a year as the interim director. Um, we've communicated back and forth with the board and we've gone back and forth on issues and all we're trying to do is make housing better in New Iberia and keep our families here. That's very important I think to all of us. But to fast forward instead of rehashing everything from the past, we asked HUD for some bullet points and some hurdles for them to identify them of to keep moving forward, or to move forward, just keep, get down to the skinny and give me some bullet points of what do we have to do. And that's kind of what we're here tonight to talk about. I know our city attorney had a few comments he would like to make, uh, and then we'll go from there. Um, just background and to, to kind of address our earlier speaker's question. The Housing Authority is separate from the city of Iberia. It has cooperated <laughs> over the years and the city has also. But it's a legally separate body. It's governed by its own board. That board is appointed by the mayor and council, but the mayor and council do not have um, control over that board. So when we say that they don't control the housing authority board, that's correct. But we've been in discussions with HUD for some time about uh, their correspondence with the board about various deficiencies. 
we met last week, uh, three of the council members uh, with the mayor and myself. We had a conference call with the folks at HUD, and we asked HUD to specify the things that they were asking that board to do now so that we could find a way to move forward. And they sent a letter that we got yesterday. We took a look at it. It was not, I don't think, very clear about deadlines and specific things they were asking for. <coughs> so we asked them to clarify that. We got a second letter, and that second letter is dated today. And uh, we met with these representatives this afternoon to go over this. And I think we have a fairly clear statement of things that HUD was concerned about. The first item had to do with audits and an auditor. The second had to do with a uh, um, strategy for public housing assets. The third had to do with flood insurance. The fourth had to do with an executive director. The fifth had to do with the special application center application to demolish uninhabitable units. <coughs> and those are the things that were in the letter that was dated yesterday. The letter that's dated today says that um, HUD expects the Housing Authority to initiate action on these items and submit a plan within 30 days from the end of the letter. And the purpose of the meeting this afternoon was to explain that to the representatives of the board and to ask if they are willing and able to do that. Now, that board meets as a public body at public meetings. It can't make a decision without getting together as a public body in a formal way. So at this time, I don't think we're asking Mr. Wesley to commit the board to take those actions, but we're explaining to him what it is we believe that HUD wants. We're trying to get in the middle of this for the purpose of bringing the board and the HUD people together on the issues that, that have come up over the years because what we don't want to do is we don't want to find ourselves in a situation where the housing authority is placed in receivership, or we have units, many that are unoccupied or substandard, or we have a situation where there's pressure to remove board members and replace board members. Um, so if we can bring people together to solve the problem, that's what we'd like to do. So we had some discussions before uh, and I think that, that Mr. Wesley and his group have gotten these letters and they've seen what they're talking about. And we talked about those this afternoon. So the purpose of this, or one, one thing I would like to see, is I'd like to see uh, some response to the correspondence from HUD, an indication of whether or not um, the Housing Authority Board, we think, is going to be willing to move down, move in that direction. Thank you. Thank you. I'll turn it over to y'all. Okay. Mayor, Council, first of all, thank y'all for inviting the New Iberia Housing Authority today to answer, first of all, all your questions and give you an idea on what the Housing Authority has been doing in the direction that we're going into. As you know, in early 18, HUD came down and took over possession of the Housing Authority and started dictating the policies that is going to occur in the near future. Uh, at first, it was a resistance because everything that we were sent to HUD to include request of funds to fix our units that was rejected. But uh, I have to thank the mayor for, uh, for kindly uh, writing a letter and addressing to our state representative and stuff. Everything has changed. At one time, our relationship was very, very bad with her, but uh, since we got the intern directing on board and stuff, she used to have a good relationship with her. As a result of that, HUD assigned us to a public housing specialist to work with us to address all the issues that we have and stuff in the charter way forward. I'm here today to tell you that, uh, that we have received a lot of the, uh, the requests from HUD and we have an idea of which direction that they want to go and we fully concur. Uh, there was issue about uh, 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 getting an ED for New Iberia Housing Authority. But we didn't have any problem by getting an ED and so, but the problem raised the funding at the time. And getting an ED to come into a housing authority that had experience and had an opportunity to go through the, the trauma that we went through. So we took our time about hiring an ED. Instead, we made an interim ED in charge because she had been with the housing authority a long time and that she had a better grip and a better relationship with her. 
And through all her effort and stuff, she not only was able to develop a good relationship with her, all of a sudden the attitude changed and stuff, and they started charging a, a way forward for New Iberia Housing Authority. Right now we are concurring with all the, all the issues that they had assigned to us and stuff, and we think that uh, the, at the route that we're going right now, we're going to be very, very successful. Of course, this ain't going to happen overnight because we still have a long way to go. But we have a clear idea of what the needs are for New Iberia Housing Authority, and we have a way forward to be the best ever. We are present. The issues that you refer to that we always receive, uh, we just about uh, address all the issues, and some of them we have already completed, and we are in agreement that we will be completing the rest of the year. Uh, the issue that represented on April, I mean, on the, uh, the 3rd of August of this year. So I just want to let you know that uh, New Iberia Housing Authority is committed to the development of its residency and that we are doing everything behind the scene to make sure that we come out on the good side of this effort. Thank you. Uh, first, I'll open it up to the council for questions. Yes, uh, Natalie? Um, I have a question because I know I asked this about a year ago and there was a lady in the audience, I don't remember who she was, but um, I had asked what the requirements were to be the director. Um, do y'all know what they are? Yes. I'm sorry because I, I, I don't know. I never got an answer. Okay. Yes, we do. And I'll send you a copy of all the, the guidelines. I'll make sure that you have access to that information. Okay, and then what is your background? Because, I, and I'm not trying to pick you apart, mm -hmm. there's been issues mm -hmm. across the board. So, what is your background, and what do you, what experience do you have that you feel uh, demonstrates your capability to continue in this position? Actually, I just stepped up to the plate. There was no one else to do it at the time. The uh, previous director was released. So there was no one else to fill the shoes, and I had been there for two years with that director doing a day-to-day, -day, so I just stepped up to fill the shoes. Okay, so do you have any, like, qualifications on paper? Yeah, well, yes, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did, um, Recently, I came out uh, acquired executive management training. Okay, but do you have, like, a business degree or anything no, like that? No, ma'am. Um, and so you said you had been there how many months? Two years, you said? Uh, three years. Three years? Now, three years. Okay, and bef prior to that, what what did you do? And what was your, well, I'm sorry, what was your title before you stepped into this role? Administrative assistant. Okay, and then before you worked there, what is your like previous? Medical. Medical, mm -hmm. okay. All right, so no governmental experience, like anything like that, no grant writing? No. Okay. Um, okay. And let me, let, me, let me just say this and answer your question. In Holland Authority and stuff, I for the director go, director is responsible for the day-to-day -day affairs, and they <coughs> usually run the day-to-day -day activity within that agency. But at their disposal, they, they have other agencies at their disposal, so whenever there's a conflict, they're able to reach on out and ask for instruction on how to uh, uh, come to some type of resolution. Uh, even though she has, uh, her, her, uh, she has, ever since she's been with us at Housing Authority, she had, had a willingness to learn, and she had, had also had a willingness to communicate effectively with others. Okay. In this case, she, uh, uh, effect, she was effectively uh, communicating with her on all levels. Uh, she took upon herself to uh, uh, to attend a couple of uh, seminars mm -hmm. uh, that was sponsored by New Iberia Harvard Authority and was successful at it. And she had a couple of mentors along the way that gave her system. She okay. had she had received training from the director in the Lafayette, Opelousas, Morgan City, and the Plyas over the past year. They sort of took her into the wing and stuff and got her through the process. And she was successful at what she do to this day. Okay. And then, because I'm really not familiar. Mm -hmm. When I got elected, they had just rezoned everything. And I remember when Marlon, even Peggy and Marlon, we were like, because I used to have the hill. The hill. 
<coughs> and I don't anymore. So I was getting familiar with it, and then I got pulled from it because it was like, wait, hold on, that's not yours, now that's Peggy's. So Peggy and I had had some conversations, but I never got deep into it because it wasn't my district, you know. How many other people are on the payroll for the housing authority, necessarily that work in the office that you're in? Four. Four? Mm -hmm. And then what are y'all titles? I have an office assistant and three maintenance staff. Okay, so three maintenance staff mm -hmm. and an office assistant. Mm -hmm. So before this, you were the office assistant. I was everything. There wasn't a maintenance staff? Oh, no, in the office wise. I had just maintenance before. Okay. Um, and then I know we appoint the board. I know the, the board, you know, serves kind of at their pleasure. They're not compensated. Who determines the salary and benefits for the people that are employed in your office? Civil service. Civil service for the city? Yeah, the state. The state. The state. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's already marked mm -hmm. out by tiers. Mm -hmm. being, okay. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other questions. I really don't want to ask. I don't want to come back full circle. Um, do you fully believe? Uh, have you had communications with Brian here? No. Okay. All right. Y'all do something it, different, but no. Yeah, we do. We, we it is. I know. I understand it's different, yeah. but his knowledge and resources are extremely in depth. Okay. Um, Not in I was just wondering if there was if the, if we had a a bridge mm -hmm. connecting these two things. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like that could be extremely helpful and healthy mm -hmm. for the for the relationship of all of this. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I, I mean, I know I can't speak for everyone, but I the feelings I have is they don't want this to dissolve. But at the end of the day, and, and I get it, probably a HUD director is is kind of like a mayor role. Like you, there's no, oh, I'm going to college to be a mayor. Like you kind of. Hmm. You have to get in it and, and learn it, and you're going to be hit with things um, from different directions. But this, the amount of problems that y'all are facing, um, do you truly feel that you have the experience to, to, to take all that on? Right I, I now? Mean, truly. Right now, we're in the process of an interagency agreement with another facility and it's going to be a director there that's going to take over uh the contract is set to start september 1st so you're not going to be the director Intern, no. not right now they're going to be the director and you're going to shadow them that's the yes. plan that's the plan okay and is the state compensating them extra for this yes. role Okay, and what is that person's qualification? Well, why don't we let her speak for herself, and she's spread on the date, if that's okay with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. no. Please stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. That's good okay, to know. Okay, and let her explain for herself. Okay, great, great. Answer your question. Okay. Ms. Trina Hendricks. Hi, Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Good evening, shall I say. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Trina Sanders. I'm originally from New Iberia. Okay. However, um, I, my background is for housing. I've been in housing for over 25 years. Uh, about nine years ago, I took over a troubled agency, which is the same status as the New Iberia, Housing Authority City of New Iberia. Uh, many items that are many of the issues um, that they're faced with, I went into St. John the Baptist Parish Housing Authority. And um, I would say in two years, um, same thing, no audits, uh, HUD, um, same requirements, um, mismanagement of funds, mismanagement of our um, basically not taking care of our property and whatnot. I worked very closely with the New Orleans HUD field office and in two years I believe I got pretty much everything caught up. Since that time we've had audits of zero findings. Um, that was not easy. It was basically bringing on the right expertise in the housing industry to address those issues. And that's basically voluntarily because I have a pet. I actually started with the Housing Authority of New Iberia. That started my career um, here. Um, but seeing the situation that the Housing Authority was in, speaking with HUD, I could not just allow 
um, this agency and the families to suffer. So during COVID time, I had some time um, and I expressed to HUD, let me go down there and just see what's going on. Let me just, just get a, a feeling of what's going on. Um, I've been working closely with Tish, Tisha, closely with Mr. Wesley, basically trying to identify some strategies on how we can move forward. Um, I did that, uh, I guess I started working with the Housing Authority probably in April, just trying to figure out what's going on, get an assessment of what's going on. I'm still um, obtaining, you know, trying to get information. However, when speaking with HUD, I shared with them, because I've been down that road before, I know what it takes to turn a housing agency around. I have the relationships um, in the state of Louisiana. I'm also the VP of our state legislative uh, National Association of Housing Redevelop uh, Redevelopment, uh, our Louisiana chapter. I'm the vice president of that chapter. So with me, I bring resources of my sister agency. So we know that uh, the housing stock is a major issue. I've already communicated with my sister agencies. Are they willing to lend some of their maintenance people? Are they willing to lend? One of the things in Louisiana, we do know we, we help each other. Um, as far as I think someone asks about the uh, additional income, I'm not, be, at this, for the past few months, I have not been compensated. My board has allowed me to travel here and to assist. And in that, um, in speaking with my board, I asked for permission to allow me to continue to work with the um, housing authority under a formal agreement. And I believe that's one of the corrective action um, plan items that HUD suggested that the housing authority New of New Iberia undertake. Uh, so my board did approve for me to assist because they know from whence we've come. Um, and feel that my experience could definitely be of value to New Iberia. And I believe it was last week that the Housing Authority of New Iberia's board approved to enter into an interagency agreement. So that should take effect in September. I'm hopeful that basically the residents of um, New Iberia will be served. They will be served well. Um, my goal is basically, I believe every family deserves a decent, safe, sanitary, and affordable housing. That's my primary goal. This is what I live for. Um, and I just want to make sure that the residents here are taken care of. Um, and how much time would you say that y'all have Don't spent in interacting? Don't get mad at me. Quite a bit uh, since um, April, like I stated. Um, About, uh, a week. How, you know, how much? interaction you think Twice, I have two or three times a week yes okay and just about every other day by phone and that's me traveling um, here and I'm sure you're aware that we have issues with the board board has issues with direction you know there's a lot of things that are coming into play um as someone who you know with the resources you have and the experience you have do you believe that the current director I guess until we make you interim um, do you think that she has uh, the capacity, energy, and knowledge to take this and run with it when you I, are done? I believe everyone has an opportunity if oh, given yeah. a chance. I won't know that until actually I actually get into the office, continue to do my assessment of everything that's going on, okay. and work side by side. Basically, what I've been doing is working with her, guiding her, and basically addressing uh, many of those deficiencies. I believe you all received the corrective action mm -hmm. plan. Yes, ma'am. Some of those items, with my assistance working with Tisha, we, we have uh, addressed uh, some of those issues. HUD is stating they want a plan in the next 30 days. I propose they will have that plan right. within the uh, next 30 Good. days. Now, that's something, I'll be honest, it takes someone with previous housing experience to put that together. Um, so anyone in this position would be at a disadvantage at, unless they at, have worked unless, at another parish entity, is what you said. Unless they have dealt with a troubled agency with the issues that this housing is faced with. Because not only are we talking about financial, we're talking about management, we're talking about operations, right. we're talking about maintenance, the physical. Right. And so. I inherited that in the St. John the Baptist Parish. Gotcha. I know what it takes to um, basically in, to, to address those issues. Right. 
and understand I am totally not discrediting you I understand the hustle I, I think there are people that have less of a on the paper you know degree experience that exceed people who I know have master's degrees it's all in the hustle it's all in the work ethic well, it's actually um, in but the I heart. have to ask these questions you know? <laughs> it's, it. a, it's actually it. in the heart yeah it is it is it's, it's it, where it, you're it, at it, and what you want right if you don't have a focus for the people that we're serving you're not right. going to do well in this field at right. all because they come first and if right. you keep that at the forefront everything else will come into place right and then what's your predicted time frame that you think is going to be necessary for you to be the interim well i will be coming on as the executive director this is how it's going to work um the agreement is basically my agency will receive a management fee from the Housing Authority of New Iberia. Mm -hmm. I get no additional funding. Mm -hmm. It's just a management fee um, for just service because not only do I, I'm coming along, I'm also bringing my staff. For instance, I have a procurement, I call our specialist. She's been working with Tisha to make sure that we properly procure because that had been an issue with the Housing Authority um, over the past couple of years. So we're making sure that any contracts that we enter into, they are in accordance to HUD rules and regulations as well as state regulation procurement. Um, it's going to take some time to turn this agency around. But it's what, what do you predict the time frame is that you will have to be, hmm? it, you know, in contract with them? Well, initially the contract is for a year. Okay. But I work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So okay. uh, that's what it's going to take. Um, so but you my hours are going to be <coughs> split between my agency and the Housing Authority of New Iberia. Okay. And I just one last question. That's fine. I'm sorry. I always have a lot of questions. Um, so can you tell us today that you would feel extremely comfortable if we brought y'all back here in six months and we asked you what is your true opinion of the current staff and their capability capacity and energy to to continue this in a positive direction at once you leave let me share with you how i manage okay um i work i expect everyone under me to work what i found is if you either you're going to get on board or you're going to go, go get off board Many um, uh, people who are not accustomed to work and they find themselves sometimes in when you realize what the job entails, many folks decide this is not the route for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the situation. I don't know the staff. Like I said, I've worked with Tisha on a limited basis. I don't want to make any perceptions. I'm coming in basically like I don't know anything right. we're just going to start the ground running and based on that we'll I'll do assessments as I would do any other employee so for me to say if someone's going to have the ability in six months I can't answer that question until I basically get in an office and work along with those individuals right and I understand my question is just basically would you feel comfortable answering those questions for us. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because we have to, you know, it's just, it's just so complicated, this situation in the public and the way they feel about our role. Um, and you seem very knowledgeable and educated on this. And I'm, I'm super excited that they found you. Um, super excited. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, I managed the public defender's office for a long time. And that's the same. It's a losing battle. It's never like, oh, we're doing great. Budget is amazing. Everyone's getting a raise. It's fabulous here. You know, so I totally understand. I just want to make sure, you know, that that you that you have the, the boldness and you seem like you do. That if we meet again in six months and we ask you, you know, do you really think these people are going to cut it in these positions, that you're going to be forthright with us. And, and you seem like you do. Because if, you, if you're from here and you have a heart for the community, clearly you should only want the best. But understand, my focus isn't necessarily on staff even though I know we're going to need that, that basically, again, staff either is going to come along, they're going to work. Six months, I'd rather not get into personnel issues. I'd rather get into the work that needs to be mm -hmm. done to mm -hmm. make sure that our residents are um, basically being provided the service that they deserve. Right. That's my primary No, focus. and I understand that, but we also need to make sure personnel and the board get to a, a happy place. 
I, I think it's a great that, that is and I think that you will be um, a prone factor in that I think we're off to a great start to have two uh, boards from different areas agree um, to allow me to split my time mm -hmm. and to assist this agency. It's already a start. It's already already yeah. a compliment to this board that they recognize they do need the help and that they are willing to accept the help. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wish you all the best. That's it. Absolutely. Thank you for answering my questions and thank you for coming. My pleasure. Deidre, you've been. Yes. Uh, I was on the conference call um, <laughs> with HUD, and I, I do want to say, uh, you know, I thank you for um, coming uh, into this uh, situation and trying to work things out. But as you know, we have these bullet points that uh, uh, that HUD said that we needed to have, you needed to have an action plan for. Mm -hmm. So, and within 30 days. And I'm looking at uh, the fourth one, which says hire an executive director. Mm -hmm. Now I know that you can't be the executive director because you are already the executive director somewhere else. So that means starting a search for an executive mm -hmm. director, which would be an important thing to do. And also, I know that last time we talked, they said that they had an auditor for two years. The one that you have for your agency mm -hmm. had agreed to do two years uh, for audits. That's correct. So HUD is asking for four years. Would they commit to the four years, you think? That's a, that has been a process. What the Housing Authority in New Iberia have done, what we've allowed them to do, we've allowed them to piggyback off of, off of our contract, our procured um, services. However, when I presented the information um, to HUD for um, New Iberia, we asked that 2018, 2019, and uh, 2020 uh, be included, 18, 19, and 20. Mm -hmm. However, when HUD looked at our contract, and you gotta understand, HUD knows, but they don't know. Because um, I also work with a procurement consultant. Um, but basically, they would not allow the Housing Authority of New Iberia to procure, um, well, to enter into our contract for the 2018 under our procurement contract. When asked in accordance to the regulations, I did not get a formal answer from HUD as to why they would not allow that to happen. So that's what I'm currently working with HUD now. Basically, please provide me a basis of why we cannot include the 2018 um, um, audit, audit um, along with the 2019 and 2020. It, it just, logically, it just makes sense. As I explained to HUD, right now, to properly procure those services, you would have to do a formal uh, RFP. Right now, people. COVID is affecting everyone. Um, just to get solicitations for the t quotes, we had a hard time getting the quotes just to, uh, from uh, uh, various uh, CPA firms. So we're, we're doing everything that we need to do. We're doing everything that HUD has asked uh, the housing authority to do. Uh, I plan on speaking with HUD and saying, you have to give this housing authority to a break. Not only can they utilize our uh, contract or our procurement documents for 2018? But at this time, if you want them to go out with a formal solicitation, they did the quote, you're not going to get the responses you need. You're demanding that the housing authority uh, proceed with audits, do what they need to do, but at the same time, you're handicapping the housing authority. This is an unprecedented time. So I'm at, I will reach out to HUD and ask that they work with the Housing Authority to include 18 in that audit. Because that's definitely what they asked for. And they wanted you to secure, they wanted the Housing Authority to secure the person for 2021 <coughs> too. That should not be a problem. But first, what we need to do is, um, and we may need to, I'm gonna have to go back to our procurement contract because I think if we extend, I think our contract was 18, 19, 20 with an option to extend. If we extend our contract with that uh, audit firm, then New Iberia will be able to piggyback off of that as well. And um, 
short-term and long-term strategy for pH assessments? For their physical, uh, for their housing stock. As of now, I um, briefly reviewed uh, an assessment that was done in their sewer and their plumbing. Uh, when I looked at the numbers, they were astronomical. Um, I also know that the Housing Authority flooded a few years back, so basically I need to cross-reference the assessment as well as those units to see if it's even viable. Uh, and just I do a total assessment of the units to see are the, can we bring these units back? A lot of people are under the uh, assumption because they see a vacant unit, why isn't anyone living there? But what you don't understand, if you have collapsed plumbing and some of the major plumbing issues that um, the city of New, uh, the housing authority city of New Iberia does, it may not be feasible to turn that unit around. So that's why you may see a lot of vacant units. So until I actually get in there, do a physical needs assessment, have that completed, I will not know. That will be a part of my plan to include <coughs> that, that we will procure a, a entity to basically conduct a physical needs assessment, which should be done every five years anyway. So that needs to be done. And that will give us the course of direction of what to do with the uh, housing stock because they uh, definitely want to put some of those on the demolition list if they're beyond repair. So are you going to apply for that? Because that's part of the, the action plan, you know, that bullets in 30 days. Based on the physical needs assessment, when that is completed, that will tell you, identify which units can be rehabbed it will identify which units basically are beyond uh, total development costs, meaning that it doesn't make sense to rehab them. They, um, they've met their obsolescence. So once that's a identified, once that assessment is done, then you would request or send that application because they have the special application center. Mm -hmm. That's what they're talking about with SAC. Mm -hmm. Once that's done, because you have to have your backup, you have to have a package done, you have to have those assessments done, then you would sit and submit an application to SAC for demolition of those units. So in the 30 days that, that's allowed, will you be able to uh, have an action plan that addresses all of these aspects? Well, what they're asking for is the housing, uh, the assessment of the units. Can't do anything until a physical needs assessment is completed. No, until the action plan, like what are you going to do? In the 30 days, they just want to know pretty much what you're going to do in the timeline. I understand, I understand what you're saying. You can't do anything until a physical needs assessment is done, as well as I would have to walk each and every one of those units, all those <coughs> units that are vacant, and basically identify what are the issues. And number one, and also look at the units that are occupied. Do we have families living in units that they should not be? So basically, a 30 it should not be an issue to draft something that will be agreeable and approved by HUD for the direction that we propose to take the uh, housing authority in. So they didn't ask that, you know, you um, maybe complete everything. Right. They definitely want an action plan mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. denote time frames as to how long <laughs> this is going to take. But these are the things that you must do. So I understand about it's going to take some time mm -hmm. and all. So they want to know pretty much how much time in order to do the last one, you know, and then you'll be able to fill out that application and all. So I'm just wanting you to commit to saying like within the third, within the 30, before the 30 days are up, that they're going to have a plan of action at HUD that says something about all of these, how you're going to accomplish it, and when you're going to accomplish mm -hmm. it. What I will commit to, because right now I'm volunteering my time. I understand. Okay. <laughs> what I will commit to is assisting the Housing Authority of New Iberia put that plan together to address those items. And understand with that corrective action plan, all of that all lumps in together. So again, time frames, we've already, I've already been working with Tisha to address many of those issues with time frames, expected time frames. That's done. It just needs to be submitted to HUD. But again, they're asking specifically, what does the Housing Authority propose to do 
to address their housing stock. And that's what I need to work with Tisha on identifying. That's what that letter is asking for specifically. And also the hiring of um, an executive director. So that, you know, I guess within the 30 days, you need to put something on paper saying that how and when that's going to happen, when you're going to put applications out or whatever for an actual mm -hmm. executive director. Okay. And I thank you so much for what, are you, what you're doing for us. But of course, New Iberia has to take it upon itself to do what it's supposed mm -hmm. to do. And we need somebody that's not going to be between two places in order to do that. So now's the time that we need to do that. I mean, it's been two years since we started this journey. And we've gotten nowhere, really. We back what, I mean, we're still two years ago. Nothing has been addressed. Nothing has changed at all. And to, I'm, I'm just, at this point, frustrated with everything. I'm sure HUD is too. So we have something that we need to do, and we need to get it done. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking the board, because they're technically in charge of it. We need to get this done. You know, it's not like two years ago. We need to get it done now, 30 days. So are you all going to be able to do this? Yeah, if I may. Yes. Uh, if I may. As, just Go so ahead. that you know, as far as uh, advertising for executive director, definitely agree. My position basically coming on as an executive director for a year, that's to get the agency out of the hole <laughs> that it's in. But also, you're right. HUD is right. There needs to be an executive director that's going to take the helm. It is an excellent time mm -hmm. for the housing authority to advertise for an executive director yeah. while basically we're doing the legwork. Someone can come in, not necessarily once that person is hired. I've already committed to the housing authority. Basically, I step out. I'm done. But still. I will continue to assist the housing authority in any way I can. I am not here to serve, quote unquote, as the executive director for the long term. I am here solely for the purpose of basically helping this agency address many of the deficiencies that are noted uh, by HUD. And I'm, I'm happy that, that you definitely commit your time to do this. And I'm finished. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mayor, uh, Ms. Sanders, I'm very impressed. Uh, you obviously have a lot of knowledge in the housing industry, dealing with HUD and what have you. Um, I, I do feel like the narrative was changed a little bit. Uh, I almost feel like we was in an interview for the executive director. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's not our job. We don't hire the, ex the executive director. And, 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 and we appoint the board. Uh, can you guys, anybody tell me what the work, because I like to address the people that I represent, and what I mean by that is uh, I, I understand things mostly on layman terms. A lot of the words that we use are not really uh, feasible for my knowledge, you know, let alone people that uh, may not have a high school education or what have you. What does the word receivership mean? If I may. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Receivership is like when when a housing authority is so far gone, mm -hmm. um, there and by working with the housing authority, asking the housing authority to address those many items, efficiencies. If they're not getting the response, the the families are suffering. A lot of times, HUD will either hire someone to come in and totally take over and manage that outside of government local government entities or they, HUD themselves, may appoint some of their staff members to uh, come in and basically uh, provide oversight over their agency. Right now, funding is low. That's why HUD is basically asking sister agencies to step in in the form of an interagency agreement to help with that. So this is probably the step prior to that happening. So if something may, is, God forbid, it doesn't happen, basically HUD is like, okay, I, we're not getting what we need. 
we're going to have to take some, you know, maybe more stringent actions. So pretty much receivership is the government pretty much takes over the agency. And when they take over, uh, it, it no longer looks like it looks now in terms of uh, uh, viability, uh, accessibility to the people that, that, that they are now serving now. I would, it, 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 no, no, no. Basically all it is is management okay. of the agency. That's what receivership and, is, management of the agency. And so management, it goes into receiver, receivership or the threat of receivership is because HUD believes it wasn't being managed correctly, right? That's correct. Okay. And again, the, the board manages the ED and the ED ma manages Absolutely. the complex. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Ms. Sanders. Absolutely. Uh, Dan, and then Mr. Bruce. So, um, you were asked to come by this board, not by HUD. Is that direct? I've been working along with HUD, with this agency. So in speaking with HUD, basically it's a close network. I have a close relationship with HUD. Um, and in hearing some of the issues that they were having, I asked HUD if I could come and look and see what was going on at the agency to see if that's something that I can assist with. So this board didn't call you to come? They did not, um, okay. no. But then you said you've been here about three months. Mm -hmm. But this is the first time I heard this <clears throat> board even mentions this. With all the issues in the past, I'm just wondering why we didn't know about your involvement to this date. I was volunteering. Basically, I <laughs> it was me driving down just looking to see. It wasn't anything formal. So, because at any time I could have said, okay, I've seen, and there was no need to bring me, I'm just saying, I, my, I feel at the time, because basically I was just coming in and doing an assessment, see what I can do to assist. Um, now that we're entering into a formal agreement, you all know, you all are, it, you all know now. <laughs> and I appreciate you coming, and I'm sure you came because you missed New Iberia. So. Of course I do, of so, course you know, I do. We appreciate that, but I was just wondering because, uh, um, it just seems like you are the sunlight that's coming over these clouds, <laughs> and we just hearing about you now. And I, I am happy to hear about you and and put us in the right direction because this affects too many people yes, it and does. families mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we just can't afford to lose. Absolutely. So thank you so much. My pleasure, Mr. Broussard. And then You're talking about the board and the board, y'all too. Board. Any other board members yeah, in this room? Please stand up. Please stand up. In the Wakefield? The maintenance crew? Anybody else? Yeah. Just, will y'all, I just want one question. Will y'all support this lady right here coming over, that thing she brings up, you know, to do? Because it'll take some of the board vote to follow up with her. So I hope, you know, something can come out. We're glad to have this bright, Star. <laughs> Star coming in. We never heard any. We we all man. We were about to ready to chew some, you know, whatever we could. But boy, you lady, you calmed us down. <laughs> and I hope you can do what you we're say you're gonna do. We're gonna do everything. And the board get power. behind her. We need to save these houses. Put some people in these houses. Demolish some of them that are bad. Let the federal government come take these old houses down that can't be used. But ma'am. You're the bright star we were waiting on. We never heard a word about you coming at all till tonight. And we hope you can do what you say you're going to do and help the people of Nyarbury. And we're so remiss that we lost you from not staying here when you were there. You know, maybe we wouldn't, you know, in a nice way, we wouldn't be. We need some, uh, we need some good guidance, you know. That's good. And you're going to give it to us, and we appreciate it. But the board, please work with us. And give her every option she has. Just to note, we only found out about her in June at the yeah. June meeting. <laughs> and yeah. July, we are from. There you go. So I'm just giving you a lot of praise and please help me out for you as much you can. I will. Thank you, Councilman Bussard. Councilman Swear. I just have a question and uh, thank you for being here tonight. Um, so you said you have a contract for a year with, this could be with HUD, correct? No. Or with the agency? With the agency. Okay, so 
when y'all would be looking for an executive director and an executive director is found, and you said, you did mention about you stepping back, mm -hmm. is that contract gonna still be, you did say about a management fee that you'll be charging. Correct. Is Correct. that, you, they'll be still paying the management fee for the entire year because no. it's a contract? No, Once it, for instance, um, if, if it takes me three months, I'm right. just saying, that's it. So it'd be null and, the that's contract it. be null and void that's and it. you walk away? Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you have an idea of, you mentioned about the audit, uh, 2018, 2019, I'm seeing about 2020, how it, since COVID, mm -hmm. waived the six month, that was a, a, an action or a recommendation from HUD. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea of um, when an auditor will be on board to take care of these audits in a timely, in a timely manner? We have, the auditors are already ready for 19 and 20, again. So 18 is already? 18, uh, that's what I'm working with HUD, allow us to continue to utilize the same firm um, that they're piggybacking off of to do 18. It only makes sense. So okay. I'm not sure why HUD is uh, fighting back on this, but that is, I just want you all to know, that is, that's a HUD issue um, okay. because the documents have been presented to HUD. <clears throat> well, appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Anybody further? I'd like to thank you, Ms. Sanders, for coming. I think that sure. you are a bright spot. I uh, can't thank you enough. I think your experience is going to be invaluable. Oh, wait, Jeff had something? I don't want to interrupt. Go ahead. <laughs> you did that to me. He's been waiting. <laughs> I didn't yeah, see you. Um, we have communication from HUD that we requested that has specific things that they want the board to do. And now you're here saying that you're, you think the board is able and willing to do those things. Yes. But it's important to reply to the correspondence, yeah, that's what as I'm Councilwoman Livingston said, there are bullet points here that they yeah. want, and there are some specific yeah. things that they're asking for. Because in the end, if HUD is happy, then we're happy. And if HUD is not happy, then we're going to have to do something. And we really don't want to get involved in it any more than we have to. So, if if the board can satisfy the HUD requirements, then that's really the priority. I don't, I hope we're not going to be here grading people's homework <laughs> as the city council. That's it. You know, that's HUD's job. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is facilitate that as much as possible, to communicate clearly as much as possible, to get from them the list of requirements, maybe to get a copy from the board of its response to those requirements, and then hopefully to get confirmation from HUD that your response met their requirements. And if we can kind of close the circle that way, that would be the way for us to move forward. We so HUD's requirements, I think, should be the focus. Mm -hmm. And meeting their particular deadlines, I think, is important mm -hmm. because we'd like to get out of this business. That's exactly where I was going to end up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my first thing, like I said, I can't thank you enough for coming. Now, the other, and I think that, you know, your wealth of knowledge shines through. I really think we have a team now that we can move forward and progress with this to get us out of this because this is not what the mayor and city council do. I represent the citizens as well as all of us. We want them to continue to live here. You know, we've been through the gamut with this. If it's going to be torn down, uh, look at examples of other cities they got rid of theirs. Uh, you know, that, that could be something you could do uh, to, well, let's see if we can do some communications on many different levels to try to just foster people. I didn't want to come in and be overbearing, come in, fire the board, come in and cause more chaos. How can we find a way to just be the conduit so that things can progress? It took a lot longer than I thought, but, but we're getting there. So I can't thank you enough. The other person I need to thank is Tish. You know, you stepped up. We talked about it in my office one day, and I said, you, you know, nobody else in that office. There's nobody else in that office. You knew where all the, you know, everything was. You had been there for two years. Uh, taking and stepping up into a role that you weren't trained to do, that you hadn't done before, but I knew you had the heart and I knew you cared about the people who live in, in, in these houses. So I, I never want to forget to say thank you, whether, whether it works out that you become the ED, whether you don't. You know, you went out of your comfort zone, stepped up and said, okay, I'm going to take this on. 
uh, I can't thank you enough for that either. I mean, I think that that shows the heart that you have. Uh, to the board, you know, we are not here to judge you. We're not here to beat you up. That, that's not our role. Yes, we appoint the board, and yes, we can fire the board. But power is something that you have to take seriously. You can't just overreact, and you can't do things quickly on the cuff because you can actually make things a lot worse. So I can't thank you all enough because you all don't get paid for this. I realize that you all are volunteers, and you all are also here because you got that heart. You know, your involvement is for the families of our community. So I can't thank you enough, too, because it has been a rocky road. And it has had a lot of bumps and twists and turns for all of us. You know, I never dreamed I would get to know everybody from HUD as well as I did. Uh, because we've had many, many conference calls, many, many discussions. You know, I, I did interject myself somewhat because we, as did the council, because we care about the families we represent. So that, that's what, as long as we remember that that's our focus and that's really the end product we're trying to do is just make better housing in New Iberia and keep our citizens here. You know, we're going to be fine, but uh, I will certainly be happy when this moves on and gets back to HUD and the board and we are out of it. Um, but I can't thank you all enough for coming. I think that this was very constructive. I think that this kind of got some people at least to where we see the light uh, coming. Uh, so appreciate it very much. Thank you. Madam Clerk, Corey. Public hearing on ordinance number 2019-11, amending general ordinance number 304 of the City of New Iberia relative to the City of New Iberia Code of Ordinances, Chapter 78, Subdivisions, Article 3, Design Standards and Requirements to Correct, Numerical Section Number. I need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Mayor Pro Tim Dahl, I need a second. Second. Second, Councilman Broussard. Okay. Is there any public comment on item 4A? Hearing and seeing none, I need a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. Motion by Councilman Broussard and Councilman Swear. Thank y'all very much. May I have a yes, question? Sir. I'll wait till we do the ordinance. I have a question. Okay, well, why, why don't we, yeah, why okay. don't we do the questions in the ordinance? <laughs> Thank you. Item 4B. Public hearing on Ordinance 2020-12, adding Section 74-23 to the Code of Ordinances of the City of New Iberia to provide for permits for docking boats at public docks. Do we have a motion to open a public hearing? Motion. Motion. Councilman Swear and Councilman Broussard. Is there any public comment on this item? Hearing and seeing none, I need a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Same too. Thank you. Item 4C. Public hearing on Ordinance 2020-13, amending Section 78-5 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of New Iberia to increase fines for violations of the subdivision ordinance. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? Motion to open the public hearing. Councilman Swear and a second. Councilman Broussard? Thank you. Uh, is there any public comment on this item? Hearing, seeing none, I need a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Motion by okay. Councilman Broussard, second by <laughs> Councilman Ledbetter. Thank you all. All right, item five. Hey. Resolution approving certificate of substantial completion in favor of Tilden A. Bonet Incorporated for pressure washing, prep, and painting at New Iberia City Hall. Do I have a motion? Move. Motion by Mayor Pro Tim Dahl. Do I have a second? Second by Councilwoman Ledbetter. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing, seeing none. Vote your machines. Thank y'all. Item 5B. Resolution approving certificate of substantial completion in favor of CAD Control Systems Incorporated for SCADA system upgrade. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilman Broussard, second by Councilman Swear. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing, seeing none, please vote your machines. Thank you all very much. Now we move on to item 6A. Introduction of ordinance repealing section 22-26 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of New Iberia 
pertaining to the registration of tree surgeons and to set the adoption of ordinance for public hearing on September 1st, 2020. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by second. Councilman Lewis, second by second. Councilwoman Ledbetter. Is there any discussion on this item? Mayor, I got a question. Yes, sir. Okay, so it looks like the tree surgeons or whatever you call the people that cut down trees in business of cutting trees will have to show us a certificate insurance <clears throat> from them to operate in the city of New Iberia, correct? Correct. But they don't have to get a permit per job to get to cut down a tree. That's that's what we're talking about, yes. Okay. So if they cut down a tree and they don't have insurance with the city we would have to find them a fine for that. Is that not correct? Insurance. You're using the wrong word. No, I'm saying, I mean, they, I know, but they, if they you're don't come. insurance. Okay. If they don't come in. Insurance with the city sounds like no, we're I issuing mean, insurance. No, we're not. But yeah, if no. they, they don't register they don't carry insurance. their insurance for their company. Correct. And yep. we catch them um, cutting down a tree. Because do we inspect that? But we won't be inspected at anymore because we're not getting them to get a permit to cut it down anymore, correct? Well, yeah, Jimmy, so, we don't, we never have. We okay. do not issue a permit and we do not inspect any tree work at, at present. So we do, never have. Do we have the right I'm, still? I'm, I'm going to call on you, Jeff. To go, if someone's cutting a tree, does Jimmy have the right to go in that property and say, do you have insurance with the city of New Iberia? That's a Jeff question. I think Happy that the way this is written, divided. but I'm going to call on Jeff for that. I, I think we're repealing the, the If we repeal the whole thing, we're not getting it. Everything. The whole thing. Okay. So yeah. they can come in, but I need insurance to run my business, but they don't need insurance to run their business. So if they, de if they destroy something at a home, then it's the liability of, I just want to make sure, I'm not, I just want to make sure we're straight. It's a, it's a responsibility of the owner, but I have insurance to do work, have a property, to protect the owner. Yeah. Right. But on tree people, we don't really gonna care. We're treating tree people differently than we treat you. Okay, that's what I want to know. That's what I thought we were doing. And I missed the discussion. I was out last meeting. You and, chaired the meeting. And and my point was, either we follow the rules that we have, or we don't have or the rules. We get rid of them. So if we want to get into regulation of who cuts trees, I mean, you have to have licenses, you have to have all kinds of stuff that a, somebody who cuts trees, you know, on the side doesn't have to have. So, you know, are we gonna, are we gonna get up, are we gonna regulate this thing like? But we're not gonna regulate anything. Okay, that's, I just wanna make sure what we're doing with this change, that's all. Yeah. Right now we're taking everything out, is that right? We're all out. We're all out. Because yeah, yeah. right now, and this ordinance has been on our books for a very long time. Yeah. Right. And we have not enforced it. Right. Okay. We, we talked about I, I'm just saying, you know. this ordinance, something like this. I just want to make and sure. And I looked and I said, we already have it. Mm -hmm. We didn't mm -hmm. even know it. Okay. Okay. Thank yes. you. Uh, Councilman Ledbetter. At the end of uh, our last meeting, I did have the opportunity to talk to uh, Mr. Landry. And uh, he had some ideas about it. And could he come up and and say what he told me on the outside of the meeting? Mr. Landry's welcome to approach. <laughs> <laughs> you go have to remind me how many. Yeah. I was I about it. That was two weeks ago. How you <laughs> felt about it? Huh? How you felt about the the, the current order? Well, I'm I'm like Jeff. If we're not going to enforce it, take it out. But I mean, I've, was I've had to really enforce it. I've had issues with people cutting trees down, pulling down power lines, and everything else. And I'm like, Dan, if you want to protect the people, you know, you were protecting the homeowners from Dan. So, you know, <laughs> well, not, not just me. <laughs> no, no, good. no. But all all your plumbers, electricians, <laughs> and air conditioning yeah. contractors. Right. We do all of that. Now the state <coughs> oversees the building contractors. So I mean. I, whatever y'all want to do, I mean, registrations we got them in for those. I don't know if you know, getting them to come in and register is going to be the bigger issue. It's like a roofing contract. Yeah, they come from out of town. They come from all over. Hurricane. I don't have a registration for a roofing contract. The state has that. 
Jeff. Guess who's going to get that job if we keep it? Oh, I know. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But you did, did feel it? like maybe we needed to keep it and actually enforce it to protect you know, If you're going to keep it, you got to enforce it. If you keep it, you're going to have to enforce it. Enforce it. You should. Reliable on the city. No. You okay. think we ought to have it? Yeah, that's the bigger question. Well, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. But if you're going to have it, just like any ordinance, any yeah. ordinance, that's a bunch we could, if you want to start getting rid of ordinances, that's a bunch you could get rid of. Dieter still has the floor. You have anything no, else, Dieter? Okay, I just want to make sure I stay, stay in order. Dan, you were next. I, I remember and, uh, Dustin. when we started this thing about garden picking up tree limbs and that. It's a part of when a tree surgeon come in to get a permit we had on that permit that at that time he was responsible to get rid of the debris so now we are we'll be responsible uh that's garden's contract says he doesn't pick up whole trees okay. it, correct it says a lot correct yeah. but one of the things that i don't pick up anything if a licensed contractor or a contractor cut the trees he wasn't even picking up the branches of the trees so now all that's included is, for is, us is, to pick up now. Ah, that's you have to talk to Gardens. Well, it, I, I'm just saying what his contract says. <laughs> no, well. That's for another day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah. That, that, <laughs> yeah, it's tomorrow, but anyway. But, but, but I, I'm just I'm just There's a bunch of areas in town where they got logs eight feet yeah. long this high. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we don't go on private property. We got one we on can. East Persian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. And we, we can't work on, on private property in Detroit. That's been there for probably two years. Now, what, per lot. what percentage do you think over the last year? I know we don't, um, oh, we're not policing it, but do you have tree people ever come in and get a permit to cut a tree? I do have people that call and ask if they need a permit to cut a tree. And what you tell them? Well, no, I don't have a permit. But I thought we had it on the books at one time. I don't. It have is on a the permit. books until you repeal it tonight. Yeah, but he just said he told him we didn't have it. I know we that, don't. but I mean, we don't enforce it. But that doesn't mean we don't have it. But what I'm gonna do, Dan? No, I'm just I don't saying. have a fee, I don't have a fee attached to it. I don't have anything. Can we do that with the acquisition people too? <laughs> <laughs> you won't get off that level. You, okay, any, you got anything questions. else? No. I'm, okay. Thank you, Dustin. You next. I get where Dan's coming from with this. So. How is it? Okay, so we not we don't enforce it, we don't police it. Tree people can come and cut these trees. They can leave all the the debris on the, and we can't do nothing about it because oh, they're they they're not licensed or or they were just a. I usually I usually research. get a call. What from I'm getting at is with what I'm I'm agree with Dan on this. So he has to have a permit in order to do a job or say like for me for example I gotta have a permit to do a certain job, and if I don't. I'm fine. So why are we giving that same leeway to these three people or to let them get away with it, in other words? I understand we have an ordinance on the books and in order to have it, we gotta enforce it. Or are we saying tonight, take it off and then we have nothing? Does that leave us in a worse position now and later down the road? Or are we gonna are we still have this same problem? Yeah, you're gonna still it's have always going to be a problem because, because but is it going to get worse? In other words, because people say, "Well, hey, we can yeah. just come in and cut a tree and leave it, leave it on the ground and be done with it," because we don't mm -hmm. have to have a permit, or we don't have to be licensed, or we don't, mm -hmm. you know. That's where I kind of go on. Uh, and and back you know, and forth I can tell you from my chair you know. and the office phone that rings, I'm sure trees have been a problem since I got here. Ordinance, no ordinance, what's on the books, what's not. Right. Gordon's contract, it is very convoluted, and we will continue to have issues. I have people that have trees that their neighbor cut that are too large for Gordon to pick up and are now rotting on the side. I got one of them when the guy pushed it across the street to the neighbor's house, okay? And it is, and I can't go pick it up or I'm in trouble right. because if it was up to me, I would send public works and I would just clean up this place and be done with this because mm -hmm. they call in constantly and we provide services to people. But I can't go on private property. I have a budget to live with. There are tons of times that I'm like, you know, I'm about to go drive in my Jeep and get it myself. But, I, you know, that's not something we can do. Mm -hmm. So trees have been a conflicting issue 
between Garden's contract, between the ordinance that we have never enforced that's been sitting on the books, you know. So are we always going to have tree issues? Yes, I think we are. I also feel that many, many tree people, no offense to tree people, but many of them, what do you need? A pickup truck and a chainsaw, okay? And a buttload oh, no. of courage to climb a tree, okay? That's all you need. And so, to pick it up. yeah, so they gonna always going to be some cowboy who's ready to cut trees. Whether he has a business, whether he's really in business, whether he's your neighbor next door, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's not, it's, you know, it's a specific skill set. So you're going to have people cutting trees, whether they're doing it, you know, the right way or not. We'll always have some issue. We just have to try to make a smart decision to, you know, limit our problems. And, ba and basically it's up to the homeowner to to decide if they want to have somebody that's licensed or insured to cut their tree. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes that, the that's homeowner. On con, that's on their conscience. Yeah. That, tree, that tree falls, obviously. Yeah. And many times the home, homeowner gives us a blog bigger than those pews you sit <laughs> yeah. in and says, go pick it up. I get that, too. So it's like so, it's like a double-edged sword. It is. Way. It is. So that's all I got to say about that. Okay. Done. Who hasn't spoke yet? I'm, I'm trying to stay. Did you speak already on it, Natalie? I made a she sidebar. Okay, okay. All right, Mr. Broussard, and then I'll Hi. keep going around. <laughs> I drive the bus and I see a bunch of kudos, <laughs> whatever you want to call them. I bury a rental what? equipment, using it, borrowing it. You know they don't have a license. They're working with the neighbors. It's a neighbor, it's a friend. <laughs> I mean, but you know, they pick them up, pulling it that way. You know, that's not how a tree man cuts the tree. But we know he doesn't have a license. I still think, like Dan said, we have to govern them some kind of way. Maybe it'll help. I don't know if we're going to be still liable when we take this off. You know, I don't know. I can't figure this out myself. Uh, but it's just dangerous. I'll make sure they're licensed and insured before they come in my yard. But how many other people do? Mm -hmm. Now, what liability will lie on us? You know, in the long run, now we take this off the books. You know. I'm just worried about anything coming back on us. If anything falls on a house, we've had them suicide before for other little things, this and that. And they won. I hate to see. If we had something on the books and then we don't have it, then some uh, half we have to go pay for a half a house. It's something to be talked about. Because <coughs> you can destroy a house, right? It's a complicated no issue. And I love to go with the flow. <laughs> it's just my thought of what I see on a daily basis of other people cutting these trees and it looks awful dangerous. If they don't know what they're doing, which way that thing will go. And Jimmy, I don't want to make it hard on you. You have enough to do already. I'm finished. Thank you, Mr. Rousseau. Who Who's next? Uh, okay, Marla? My, my thing is, if if this is going to make it better, yeah. you know, that's the question. Is it going to make it better or is it going to make it worse? And, I mean, Jimmy was just up here. I mean, you think leaving it on the books and trying to enforce it is going to make it better? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, because, I mean, I, I got a lot of issues. Not a lot of issues. I, man, I, mean, I'm, I hate over-exaggerating. I got some issues in key spots. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like, for instance, there's a church in my community, a historic church. They had a tree fell on, on, not on the church, but on the lot behind the church. And it's an adjudicated property as well. So the people at the church, and it's an older church with older people, they, they, they don't have the resources to cut that big old tree. It's a big tree. <coughs> and uh, it fell after one of those storms or what have you. And it's been there for almost two years now, you know. And the people at that church, I stop and talk to them and make them understand. They respect that. But then there's other people who say, oh, he ain't done nothing about that tree. <laughs> you know, now, I could take it because I know what I signed up for. But then I do feel like we need to do something about the tree that's adjacent to the church on adjudicated line. I mean, what do we do? I mean, and I'm like you, Fred, and I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like... Hiring some of the cowboys and the couillons, like you said, <laughs> and get them to go cut it down out of my pocket and put it to the road 
and call God and ask him when he pick it up. But then you do that one time, and you got to do it for everybody. Yep, yep. And I can't afford to do that <laughs> for either. everybody. I kind of have a plan to approach the church, get some of the members at the church, and let us all cut it up, put it to the road, try to get guards to pick it up. But man, we got a few issues like that. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't yeah. know. And you and I talk thing, about, people don't realize how much we talk about those issues. Yeah, you know? and, and the other thing is, and I know Jimmy knows this better than everybody, people are always looking for a deal, both sides. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Both, I said this at the last, both sides are looking for a deal. The tree man realizes it in front of you, gave a good description. The tree man don't need nothing but a chainsaw in the truck, and he can do it cheaper than Bob's tree service. You know, and the customer, all they hear is, I need you to cut that tree down so it don't fall on my house for the next dawn. And the mm-hmm. guy is gone. And the first, the, if, the citizen, if the citizen owns his property, that's a great thing. Because now we can all, you know, it's going to be between the next door neighbor who don't like, who don't like the tree or didn't like the tree being, being laid and, <laughs> and the owner of the house. So we can say, well, no, you, you know, you got to get your neighbor to move. We can try our best. Even that one is tough. But when it falls on an empty lot or it's put on an empty lot, we don't have no ground to stand on. If that empty lot is next to, like I said, a church or a homeowner. Mm-hmm. We need some type of ground. I feel the same way with grass too, Jimmy. But we need some type of, uh, I don't know, something. We need some type of enforcement, man, on these on these issues right here, because you know, again, a lot of it is a uh, lack of education and understanding what we do as a government, not knowing that we can't go on private property. Mm-hmm. You know, I said this last time. We need to get the message out that if a tree is cut in your yard, I think it's our responsibility to get the message out the best we can. If a tree, and that's why I keep saying it on the mic on camera. Mm-hmm. I think if a tree is cut, if you cut a tree that's too big for gardens to pick up, you need to find a way to have it removed. You know, it's not because we. You know, I've heard you say this before, it's Freddie, because we're not a tree service. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I wish we was. I mean, <laughs> you know, how about neighborhood cleanup days where we just get together and get all of the trees in respective neighborhoods. You know, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, get with the church. Say, look, on the 19th of March, we're gonna be passing in the public works truck. Get that tree to the road, and we're gonna get rid of it. Partner with God and partner with the city. That could happen. I mean, I see some neighborhoods where it is. Yeah. It's happening mm-hmm. in Little Brooklyn that, right now. We, yeah. we get, we get, to, and that's. I was gonna bring up Little Brooklyn, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to throw my people under the bus because they're doing a good job. Mm-hmm. I was gonna compare orange to apples. But we're going to use that as an example, I'm hoping, okay. and get into all the other neighborhoods. Right. I mean, that can happen anywhere in town. Right. Man, I love Little Brooklyn. Believe it or not, I lived there for two years on Hartin Street with my Aunt Peggy in the 80s. So I got family over there, but they're doing this project for the, for the, for the two-street community. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. easy to do. Mm-hmm. It really is. Because we worked on West End um, Neighborhood Revitalization, <coughs> and we picked one street, mm-hmm. and that street was awesome. But then three or four streets, five, six streets, you know, getting there, you're like, okay, what we going, what we going to look at? And then leaving there, you forget about how nice that one street was. So, I mean, and we can't do everything, but I think we need like a tree pickup day, just like they do paint and hazardous waste pickup day. That's that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Natalie. Well, I have more that went before me because I had an idea and then everything you just spoke on added a branch to my idea. Oh, Ooh, no pun intended. Oh, um, so I was thinking, this is just a thought that just came up. It's not something I've been plotting on. So we get rid of this ordinance, <laughs> right? Um, what about if along with getting rid of this ordinance, we take away this whole tree blah 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 thing with garden what about we what about we take that out the contract take it out it could be branches we can define branches no bigger than you know two inches you know if you got some sticks you want to put to the road take it out completely because if we're not enforcing it we're not enforcing it and it's across the table we are not picking up trees we're not. No, no if ands, buts about it. We don't do it anymore. It's out. But once a year, maybe in July, pre-hurricane season, we're going to have, you know, a, a three or four day window where you get your stuff 
cut by this weekend and Gordon's gonna do a route through the whole city on X week and pick your stuff up. But during the year, all this who done, who did it, what? No. If a tree gets cut on your own property, that's your own problem. What about that? No rotten branches fall in a windstorm. It doesn't matter. It's yours. If you have a tree in your yard, <laughs> you have to understand if your tree is rotten and branches fall, that's your life. I mean, I grew up in a house where we had five pecorn trees. Hurricane Andrew ripped one of them completely out and like took out half the garage. Well, you can't just leave it there. They go burning in New York. You can't burn in the city limits, Mr. Broussard. <laughs> we can find you for that. Well, we have an ordinance for that. But that, that's just a thought. That's just a thought. I mean, I, I, I think if, we, if, if Jimmy can't enforce it, no, there's no point. Why well, have a law without a sentence? Like, that's just, it's stupid. It, it's like, it just, when I first got on council and I wanted to have a food truck at my high school reunion and I was told you can't and it was like well why and they're like because we don't have an ordinance about that and I'm like mm -hmm. we don't have one that says I can't mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what you gonna tell me there's no point but why not you know we already have issues budget with Gordon and, and he's taking a big hit what about you know refiguring that situation out and maybe cutting a deal to where one or maybe two two weeks a year they come out just for, for trees that way they prepare for it and they know what they're looking for. But the rest of it, make it your own responsibility because clearly we can't enforce it. We can't draw a line. Nobody understands. Why not just make it clear? That's all I have. All right. Thank you. Anybody? Do you have one? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I want one last comment is that, you know, thank you, Mayor, for Public Works and thank Garden mm -hmm. for picking up trees that's not in the contract right. and to help right. people out. Because you don't predict sometimes a tree falling or you don't predict the tree's rotten and you've got to cut it down. But you leave it out there for two weeks, how ugly that street looks. The whole street looks ugly, not just in front of that house. So I don't, you know, I think uh, I appreciate what's been done in the past. But for liability, <laughs> if we don't have this on the books, and I have no problem with not having it on the books, and a tree falls on your house when you get it. It's not our problem. But if you have it on the books and we don't enforce it, that could be our problem. Right. So, you we're know in what? Or out. Out. Right. I mean, <laughs> we're in or out. I don't, I, personally, I think we shouldn't be out. I'm going to vote for it to be out because we don't need no more liability. We can work out this tree thing with a contract or revise a contract or with the homeowners, but we need no more liability. And is that not so? If we don't have it, three trees can fall in your house and we're not liable, right? But if we have this on the books and we don't enforce it, there's a maybe a way that we could be liable. Yeah, and, and we're gonna okay. have a problem if we have it on the books saying you have to have a license and a permit and all that, and somebody goes and hires the cut rate guy, right. yeah. Mr. Lewis talks about, yeah. mm -hmm. and then we get the phone call after about this job we never knew about, mm -hmm. but we should have been out there watching. I just think we're in or we're out. Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm in agreement with um, Dan, now you brought that up, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. Well, thank and you, I Mr. Bruce. You straight, <laughs> my whole, my light is up again. <laughs> my light is up. I appreciate it. And, okay. Uh, I really don't want to be liable. So. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. I think we've been off without it. Any further discussion? I'll just add one more wrinkle. And that's what I do. Um, if you vote tonight, uh, this is just to introduce it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we proceed that we adopt this ordinance and we're all out, okay, if that's the way we go, because that's the way it's written right now, that doesn't mean, I don't want our citizens to think we just throw our hands up, okay? Our people pay taxes. We service our people. Mm. We're in a service business. This is what we do, okay? I want people to realize that even if we say, okay, this is gone, I'm not, we, none of us, we all know we're still gonna have tree issues, and we all know that we're still gonna have to find a way to address them, right. okay? So if we say we're moving with this for the liability issue, you can pretty well bet we coming back with something else. Mm -hmm. we, we, are, we are not gonna be able to survive in my estimation of, hey, we're all out, see y'all later, you know. Uh, worry about your trees yourself because there's so many other functions that you could say the same thing 
There's so many things that our city government does that doesn't make a profit. Our city government does it is not for any other reason except to be a service business, which is what we are. So at some point, you can bet we'll end up, you know, modifying something or doing something different, coming up with some new idea or modifying some a contract or a new contract. We're going to be doing something to address some trees along the way because we can't leave all that. I don't want people to think we just abandon them, that we will not do anything because we're going to have to do something. Yes, sir. One last question. So if we're abandoning this ordinance, we were talking about how moving this effect moving it over to a junk it'd be willing to be moved over to junk if the trees left out for so long or yada yada, I don't yada. Know. we don't know that's what i'm saying once once we once we do every action has an equal and opposite right. reaction just be prepared yeah, for the reaction we we'll have to do something that's that's just, you know okay no, yep. no. yes jeff and then i'll go dj i would still make people responsible for stuff on their property right yes yeah, yeah and i still want to i, would I still, still want do to do that second thing yeah. Okay. Well, they get it to the curb sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right. We better deal with it. Yeah. 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 Deidre. So the, the the point of taking it out of uh, because we weren't enforcing it, that was the point of getting rid of um, that ordinance, and then making it the responsibility of the homeowner. So the homeowner has the opportunity if they want Joe Blow with a with a ladder and a and a chainsaw to cut their tree. Then they're totally responsible for it. If he have insurance, if he has insurance or not, that's on them. If it falls on their house, that's on them. So, and if they put it by the street, and nobody picks it up because he didn't haul it away. Well, you know, that's another kind of issue. But they technically they're responsible for it also. And if we said that we were going to kind of put do, put a policy together once this passed and we could kind of attach you know we would have to pick it up a fee to it so that's where it stood in the ordinance committee meeting and that was the rationale behind it. yes ma'am and i'm finished okay one more thing okay sure that's so, uh, that's why we're here does i do and that's the problem so we're making the homeowners responsible right yep but again, the the public, when we're talking about adjudicated properties, they think they believe that we're the owner. Yeah, One but, of the but, most complicated but, but things. We're not. But we're not. And, and it's it's hard to tell them that. I know. It's but hard to make them understand. Adjudicated doesn't that. mean that we own it. We don't own adjudicated property. The people that didn't pay their taxes is who still owns that property. Right. And what's going to happen? We're going to have a problem. I don't mean to be ugly, but it's the truth. We're going to have a problem with the person who doesn't want to do the right thing. And it's the same with every ordinance and everything we have. The person that doesn't want to take responsibility and do the right thing, and it sits in front of their house, and they aggravate their neighbors with it, and they, you know, mess up their street with it, those are the people we're going to have to find a way to deal with. And unfortunately, that's part of our job. That's what we do. And we don't work for them. We work for the neighbors that are being influenced or infected or, you know, troubled by whatever's going on. Anyway. Anybody else? Thank you. Nothing further? Good discussion. Then I'll ask you to please vote your machines. Thank you all very much. Good discussion. <clears throat> That's what we do. <sighs> Madam Clerk, 6B. Introduction of ordinance to amend section 38, 38-52 38 and 38-53 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of New Iberia relative to junk and set for public hearing on September 1st, 2020. Motion. Do I have a motion? Okay. I have a motion. Okay. Motion by Councilwoman Lopez, second by Councilwoman Ledbetter. Is there any discussion on this item? Uh, it, yeah, Mayor, it, it, and this is when we move the tree stumps to junk, right? Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. No discussion? Then I'll ask you to please vote your machines. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Item 6C. Introduction of Special Ordinance Number 2019-2020-13, amending the budget to reflect year-to-date activity and to set for public hearing on September 1st, 2020. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion. I just heard about uh, Councilman Broussard and Councilman Lewis. Is there any discussion on this item? 
Hearing and seeing none. Please vote your machines. Thank you. Madam Clerk, 7A. Adoption of revision of ordinance number 2019-11, amending general ordinance number 304 of the City of New Iberia relative to the City of New Iberia Code of Ordinances, Chapter 78, Subdivisions, Article 3, Design Standards and Requirements to Correct Numerical Section Numbers. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion Second. by Councilman Lewis and Councilwoman Ledbetter. Any discussion on this item? Mayor, I've got a question. I'll try. You try? Yeah. Okay. On this ordinance, the thing about the credits and incentives that you can get when you save a live oak tree. Mm -hmm. And they show the um, incentives that you can get uh, when you do that. And it says it's approved by the mayor and the city council. Mm -hmm. So every time we have a tree that's trying to be saved because of um, commercial or whatever, per incident will come in front of you and the council to per de out. Per development, not per oh. tree. Okay? okay, If you're saving 10 trees, you don't have to come 10 times. <laughs> but what I would like to see, basically, think of it if we had had that, I'm going to pick on them, when the Walmart oh, neighborhood grocery came. Two oak trees. Okay, and those big oak trees that everybody became upset about. It would have been really nice if they had come before us and the public heard about it and then they also on their own defense they would have heard the outcry from the public about those trees so i think it's important that they come before us and it's not going to happen that often because we didn't say you couldn't cut the tree we said you don't get the incentives unless you come we you know you have free choice in this country if you really want to kill an oak tree you can do it uh but what we're trying to do is incentivize people and, de and developers to respect that wonderful beauty that we have that you go to the people come from other parts of the country and they're like they're amazed by our trees i think we take them for granted but this is an opportunity so i want them to come because i think that public aspect of it mm -hmm. you know might actually save some trees because at one time the uh, planning zone tried to implement a green space a very large ordinance about yes. all kind of stuff you remember yes. that yes so uh, that's that never made it to the first base. That didn't make the okay. first base because it was too much at once. Right. It was a giant thing. What we're trying to do is foster growth. I think this council knows that. Mm -hmm. Y'all have helped tremendously in getting new jobs and getting new businesses here. And we're going to continue to do that. So we don't want to deter growth by too many rules. But this is just an opportunity to take advantage and get a credit if they so choose. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Mr. Mussard. Give credit to Mr. Miller on Main Street with our McDonald's, our beautiful tree. Mm -hmm. He built, he extended around McDonald's and didn't touch the big tree. No, he did. So that's exactly who we're looking for, people like that. That's exactly right. And he could have got a little break on his, uh, yeah. you know, a little but incentive. He's been a nice fellow, so appreciate everything he does. Good. Anybody further? Hearing, seeing none, please vote your machines. <laughs> Thank you. 7B. Adoption of Ordinance 2020-14, adding Section 74-23 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of New Iberia to provide for permits for docking boats at public docks. Need a motion. So moved. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem Dan Dahl. And I need a second. Motion. Councilman Roussard. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing, seeing none, please vote your machines. Thank you very much. 7C. Adoption of Ordinance 2020-15, amending Section 78-5 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of New Iberia to increase fines for violations of the Subdivision Ordinance. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by second. Councilman Lewis, second by Councilwoman Ledbetter. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing, hearing none. Please vote your machines. Thank y'all. Okay. Item eight, we have no discussion items. Now we go to item nine, Councilman's remarks. Natalie. <laughs> I don't have any. Okay. Every now and then. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Lewis, Mel Saving Marlon. No, no comment. Okay. Mr. B. Deepest condolences to the mayor and the decoy family. 
put a pass in over the line. Thanks. And uh, I want to state on behalf of my family, I wish to thank the citizens of District 3 for your confidence and support for another four more years as Councilman of Yarbury. I will continue to work with the mayor, Mr. Decourt, and other council members to make Yarbury a great city for the next four years. I just know that the officials at the state of Louisiana DOTD and our Louisiana state legislative representatives will share in my happiness when they learn <laughs> that I will be serving another four years in Yarbury to get more funds for different projects. I like that. On that today. Well, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> Mr. Dan, eight years ago, good. some of these, they weren't even in here when I'd go on and on and yeah. on yeah. about different projects. I remember I said right here. this yeah. last four years, I've been remiss. I would be remiss if I did not give credit to my supporters and friends who do not hesitate to let me know when it's time to zip it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I wish the best of luck to my fellow council uh. members on the election run on the 3rd November 2020. I wish y'all luck. All right, everybody run. And come on back and we'll sit together. Thank you, Mr. B. But I uh, thank y'all. Finally, <laughs> nobody running against me. <laughs> Unopposed <laughs> after 12 years. Congratulations. Mr. Look, it's, it feels good that the people recognize that what we do is well respected. Thank you, Mr. G. Yeah. Dan. Yeah, our prayers out to you and your family about your mom. Thank you. Great woman, friend of my mom. They don't make them like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I want to uh, congratulate the ones that won the polls, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Bruce Sawyer, Mr. Swear, but I I think that the proof is in the pudding with the uh, other council members that had opposition. They just gotta go by the record. The record speaks for what y'all did for this administration and how much movement y'all did for y'all districts and for this town. I mean, that's all you need to say to your opponent. Look what we did in the last three and a half years. What have you done? I, 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 was, I was shocked. But uh, wish y'all the best of luck, and because um, the mayor needs good people around him to continue this mission he is on <laughs> to make the city grow. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Peter. I just want to say that at the beginning when I gave the prayer, it was a prayer about healing. And that is very much needed in this day and time with the pandemic and other things that are going on. And I want everybody to be reminded that we are all, we've all been, we were all made in the image of, of God. No matter what race you are, what ethnicity you are, what sexual orientation you are, uh, what political party you are, and I could go on and on and on. We all made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And one thing, the greatest teaching of all is that he wants us to love everybody. And if we can do that, if we can just show the love that we have that God has for us in everything that we do, we can get through anything. And lastly but not least, it's very important that you remember that you do unto others as you want them to do unto you. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you. Dustin. Uh, yeah, I have a few. Uh, Mayor, first off, my condolences to you and your family. Thank you. Um, of course. Um, also to uh, our marshal's office and our judge for coming forward this evening to present the plaque to uh, Mr. Yeah, Vick that was cool. For his family. That was very nice for them to do that, and thank you for allowing that in this room. 
It was cool to see. I, I did know Mr. Vic personally. He was a, he was a great man. Um, and I do miss him very much. And I do pray for Miss Pearl quite a bit. Uh, also, I do want to thank, um, well, first I want to say congratulations to all the candidates who qualified, number one. Um, I want to wish everyone, especially up here, good luck in the upcoming election. Um, I do want to thank the residents of District 6 uh, for allowing me to also decide to, to allow me to do another four years and, and be the voice for them that I've been doing for the past four years. Like Dan said, we've been doing a lot, and I reckon it does speak for itself. Um, and Mayor, I want to thank you for guiding us in that direction also. We couldn't do it without you and the administration. Um, so, uh, yes, I, this is my second term unopposed. And Mr. B reminded me this evening that I'm lucky. <laughs> but at the same breath, I guess it shows uh, to the constituents to see that I'm doing a good job and, you know, I think it needs to continue and it will continue. And we do have a lot more to, to offer in the future too. So, um, but thanks again and everybody have a good night. Thank you. I just need to thank everybody for the support of my mother passing. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, and the only other thing is, I, I need to thank our citizens that, uh, how blessed I am to do this job again. You know, I love this job. So uh, thank y'all. And with that, uh, next meeting is August 18th. Look on Civic Source to buy our properties that are adjudicated. We'd love to sell them to you. And I need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Thank y'all.